Just a short update today on the Skelly family and Hey Mom, Hey Dad YouTube channel. First, I want to show you our garden. Right now, we just have lettuce and kale. It is flourishing. And it's amazing that when we moved here over five years ago, this patch of soil right here you see fenced in, if you were to dig down just a quarter of an inch, it'd be all just orange clay. It's really bad orange clay. But now it's very fertile soil. You can see how our plants are thriving. And we basically, in our garden every year, we grow a salad. So we grow all kinds of lettuces. We do have some broccoli this year too. Kale. And then we also do cucumbers, tomatoes, and peppers. And we haven't put those in here yet because sometimes we'll have a late frost here in April in Georgia. So we usually wait to the very end of April or beginning of May to do that. But going, going back to the soil, this soil is so fertile now. And one of the things we employed in our garden is we got a few chickens. I think it was five or six that first year. Put them in here, fenced them in. They ate every blade of grass that was in the, this area. They tilled it up. They fertilized it with their waste. And over time, it began to become good soil. We also put wood chips on top of the soil. The wood chips act as a natural... Um, it gives the it waters the, the plants by themselves. You water the wood chips or the rain waters of wood chips and it releases it slowly over time like a natural drip irrigation. And then those, those wood chips break down over time and become good soil themselves. So we actually had a tree cut down and wood chipped almost the whole thing. We had a, some good source of wood chips from a local, um, not telephone company, electric, local electric company that was going around cutting trees away from the lines. And so they would come and drop off a couple loads for us. We had a really good source for that. So that's our, our garden for now. Eventually we'll put cucumbers along this right here and they'll go up the, the fence there we have in the middle. We'll have some tomatoes here. We'll have some peppers here, maybe a couple other plants here and there. Now let's go check on the chickens. Oh, before we do that, there's Sasha. Her new nickname is Starlink. <laughs> Cause she looks like a radar. Had to get that uh, cone of shame put on her because she got out of our fence chasing after something. She usually doesn't do that. And she really cut her leg open pretty bad. Take her to the vet and so she wouldn't play with her wound. Got the cone of shame. All right, the first chicks we're gonna check out are the meat chicks, also known as Cornish Cross. So we had a little bit of a tragedy here the last week. We got our first batch sent to us in the mail. We had ordered 16 of them. And um, they're doing okay. And then they started dropping like flies. It was crazy. I've never experienced it in my life. I ordered from this hatchery quite a few times. Um, never experienced them dying like this before. We literally lost uh, nine of our 16. And we, I mean, we did everything right. We gave them a good environment, good water, good food, heat. And it just kept on dropping, man. I don't know what the problem was. So I called the, the hatchery, and thankfully they, they refunded me for the loss. But today, I was out running errands and decided to start, drop by a local tractor supply, and they had Cornish Cross in stock. So you probably can't tell from the camera, <clears throat> but there's about, I got eight, so we have 15 total now. Eight are about you know three to four days younger than the other ones, the other seven. But they're all doing good. They're nice and healthy. <clears throat> and we look forward to them growing up and then processing them. And then eventually eating some good scrumptious chicken meat. Yummy. And when we make them, we eat their first chicken. We process them. We'll do some video of that. And also when we eat them, we'll probably do some video of my wife cooking it. And have the meal she makes. All right. And now we're going to check out the other chicks, the laying hens or the pullets as we call them now, they're not hens yet, but we're gonna check on them to see how they're doing. They're out here in, in their outside coop. Okay, let's see how they're doing. Right. So Elijah manufactured a little perch for them over there. The they have the water up there. They like going through that little tunnel, center block tunnel. They have their food. And look how they're, they're feathering up pretty good. You see? So they probably still go under the, the heat lamps at night, but during day like right now, it's, I don't know, it's probably in the 60s right now, maybe high 50s. 
They're doing just fine. Yeah, there's one right there. See his little feathers. Well, it's a she, not a hay buddy, but yeah, they're all she's in here. We don't have any transgender chickens. The wings are getting really long. Yeah, they're feathering in good. Before you know it, we'll have them in a chicken tractor out on grass. And then eventually we'll have them in a group, well, probably their own spot with a rooster or maybe two roosters. You know, these are all supposed to be hens. We got them from local track supply, but it wouldn't surprise me if we ended up getting a rooster. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me one bit. I don't see any signs of one yet. When you start seeing large crests or they're bigger or they're being more dominant, that's when you know you might have a rooster on your hands. Mm -hmm. mm. What do you like about having chickens, Alyssa? Uh, I like that they give us eggs. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They do? What about you? What do you like about having chickens? Uh, I like having them to play with. Be careful when you put them back down, okay? Yeah. What about you, Delia? What do you like about having chickens? Um, a lot of stuff. They give us eggs. We can make lots of stuff out of eggs. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we grow them ourselves or anything like that, then we can get used to them and they'll start being friendly with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to look at our other chickens here, one of our grown up groups, see how they're doing. We have three different groups here. We have a retirement community where it's just older, older rooster, the bunch of older hens, don't really lay many eggs. Then we have two that are like in prime age. And here's one group right here. The rooster you can see in the mineral, his name is Eduardo. He came from his father, his name is Eddie, so I'm going Eduardo. He's actually the cross between an Easter egg, which is what his dad is, and a golden comet. That's why he had different colors like that. And back here we have golden comets. You can kind of tell what those ones are. Because this one right here, the one right behind it, they're a cross between a golden comet and an Easter egg, just like Eduardo is. So is she. And so is she over there. And so they actually lay lots of uh, bluish, greenish eggs, and they're bigger too. So we kind of found a little glitch in the system, able to get a lots of blue-green eggs. Because blue-green eggers, also known as Easter eggers, usually don't lay lots of eggs, and they're usually very small. That's why if you want to buy blue or green eggs from someone who's raising those kind of chickens, they're going to cost more per dozen. But because we have uh, ones that lay a lot of them now, blue-green eggs, and they're bigger, just like Golden Comet, just blue and green. What you got there, dude? Frog. A little froggy? We find frogs quite a bit. We have our pond over there, so we have quite a bit of wildlife around here from turtles to frogs to fish to beavers to water moccasins <laughs> and yeah, we've had lots of encounters with wildlife around here haven't we mm -hmm. Tally wants yeah. to eat frogs for breakfast yeah she likes frogs these frogs are too small we have some really really big ones in our pond you could literally take their legs and fry them up